uh, in front of us here, this uh, is the house of uh, Lilian Masabedingoi. Uh, she was the first president of the ANC Women's League. Mm -hmm. uh, she was one of the most uh, powerful women that we had who were helping to fight against the struggle that we had uh, here in South Africa. Um, of course, for a lot of people, uh, we have faces like your Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, Walter Sisulu, but the whole, there is a whole lot of people behind them who are also uh, you know, helping making sure that mm. we have the freedom that we are having today. So um, Lillian Goish was uh, one of the leaders that led a march uh, in 1956 on the 9th of August uh, that went to the Pretoria Union building whereby uh, women that were protesting against the anti-pass laws because they knew exactly what those laws, uh, you know, those passes did to the men. So as they were to pass them to women, and they felt that they're not going to be having that, no. you know. So oh, sorry, what was the anti-pass law? Um, it's like a dom bus. Dom is an Afrikaans word, which means stupid, and bus means ID. So it's like they were introducing the type mm. of law to women that they are also going to be carrying those pass books everywhere that they went. Yes. So that was basically to try to cut the communication uh, between, you know, the white and the black. So basically when they just see mm. you, they just get that book, open it, they see your name, your surname, they don't have to ask you what's your name, what do you want here, how old are you, you know. Basically mm. that booklet had every information about you. So that's where the woman felt that they're not going to be having that. So Lilian Goy, uh, Helen Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, they managed to recruit about 20,000 women. So that's where they took off in 1956 and uh, they went to the union building. Right. So, um, and that's why in South Africa on the 9th of August every year we celebrate Women's Day. Yes. Ah. That's so, a public holiday ah. in South so Africa. So that holiday basically mm. uh, comes from those women who were brave enough you know, to say that they mm. are not going to be having those uh, passports. Um, they are just going to be sticking to how they actually lived. So, um, just after that, she was uh, burned in 1957, and when she was burned, she just had a quite, um, you know, she she was she was a very you know brave and outspoken woman. Mm -hmm. uh, she said that she doesn't mind you know being uh, silenced or whatever, but when she dies, she will die a very happy person because uh, what she's actually fighting for, she knows that mm -hmm. um, you know even if she won't enjoy it, but she knows that her children. Uh, the future will enjoy it. So whatever that she did, she never did it for that time, but she did it for us as well now. Hence, we are able to be walking freely, not having any passports. Almost so, like a martyr um, nearly, isn't she? Mm. Yeah. She knew the trouble she was going to get herself into Yes. by undertaking that and leading the she people. She was very brave. I mean, she, yeah. she, she also once said that men should take off their pants, give them to women. <laughs> men should take their skirts, you know? She was very brave. She wasn't scared to talk, you know, like, hey, men must bring those pants and we must give them the skirts. It's like men are, you know, sissies and we can do it, you know, like, so she's very, you know, inspiring to a whole lot of women that we had here. Yeah. Uh, so just before she passed away, she was held under house arrest for 18 years. And uh, yeah. Can, yeah, for 18 years inside this house. But it used to be just like a normal house. It was not renovated or anything. So that's the other reason why we have this uh, sewing machine over here. Uh, this is this was her other talent. So was to sew clothes. So what she did is she sewed the clothes, and that's how she made a living. But she could not go out and sell the clothes. She had to secretly give the clothes to the neighbors. The neighbors would sell it for her, bring mm. back the money, and that's how she survived. For 18 years. For 18 years, and hence you can see there's the colors of the ANC as well. Uh, just uh, representing that as well. So just before she passed away in 1980, that's where she started having uh, heart failure, heart problems, and that's uh, the cause that led to her passing away. And do her family still live here? Yes, uh, the family is living here. Uh, so the house is not a museum <laughs> or anything. It's just uh, recorded as one of the historic sites. And I'm very happy. Uh, to be living also on the street. I know? was just thinking that yeah. you share a <laughs> street right? yes. with such an iconic yeah. lady and family. Yes, uh, actually my, 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 my great-grandmother, uh, you know, they were also very close to her. She was also one of the people who would help to sell the clothes. She was one of the people to hide her, you know, even at my home. She was once hidden there, you know, on top of the roofs. 
Hola. Hey, wait, no, on top of the roofs, you know. Really? Inside the so stores. did she get out a few times? Did she manage to sneak out a few yeah, times? Yeah, she did. Or were there manage. guards here all she the time? She did manage. But as soon as she was under house arrest for 18 years, she had no she chance. Like she just had to stay inside the house. It's a sad way to live, so isn't it? It's terrible. Mm -hmm. For such a, an amazing woman. That's right. Very amazing. But Very think amazing. of what she's achieved. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us, Sandra. My pleasure.